together to make things happen, and certainly for research, it's very isolating, isn't it? We need to get together and, and promote it and support our students. We've got a, a clutch of students at uh, UH researching really at the cutting edge of, of my area of work, which is in body embodiment. I'm particularly interested in somatization, so that's the sort of area I've been studying for the last 12, 15 years. And um, I just want to tell you briefly about what we've been doing in an early intervention, that is catching patients before they go down the route of psych psychiatry, um, in primary care. And uh, we did a, a, a small drilling down study with qualitative and quantitative um, mixed methodology to find out whether an, a particular approach that I've been developing for some time called the body-mind approach, which helps patients to make links between the bodily experience of somatization in a so sensory way with their mind, if you like, and using movement and body awareness and mindful movement particularly with witnessing, which, which does bring in metaphor and verbalization in primary care patients. Um, the patients at the moment are called medically unexplained patients, and uh, medically unexplained symptoms patients. There's a new term coming out in ISD-11, apparently ICD-11, which is going to be called, I think, body, body, body stress syndrome (BSS), which patients apparently like and GPs like. So we might be going away from MUS, but at the moment it's the MUS clinic, and we uh, we've got a commission, we've got a spin-out company from the university and we've been commissioned by Hertfordshire PCT to embed it with a quick bid, which is quality, I don't know if you've heard of it, quick, quality um, innovation, um, prevention and productivity. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a national government initiative in the Department of Health which links mental and physical health, trying to bring the two together because they're very split off at the moment. And these patients need both. They don't want to go to CPT because it's not here, it's here, or here. <laughs> Or here in the head, headache, you know, they don't see why they should go for psychological therapy, so they don't want to go there, but they wouldn't mind coming to a, a well being group because that's what we found in the research that patients um, improved in their well being. They also reduced their anxious depression, which is very common in primary care, and luckily for the GPs, they didn't go back to the GP. This is why the GPs like it because they're not able to help these patients very easily, there's no pathway for them. Um, especially the non-psychologically minded. So they just keep going back to the GP every day. Every single day these patients go back. And the GPs don't know what to do. So we're solving something for them. Their medication uses remain the same or was reduced. They all want to come off medication. And we did a cost-benefit analysis and we found that the uh, effectiveness in terms of um, comparing it to CBT, we're not in competition with CBT, but just comparing it to CBT because it's a group uh, it's delivered in a group of um, eight to ten patients, was <coughs> very cost effective. Um, the market research analysis that we did, where we got GPs together, we got about 100 GPs together, we did various focus groups, they were biting our arms off because they wanted to know when is it going to start, when is it going to start, because we've got all these patients we'd like to refer. So what is the treatment? Um, at the moment, as I said, there's a lack of integration between mental and physical health, um, and this causes particular difficulties for this somatization patient group. Um, with all the abdominal pain, the headache, the chest pains, the joint aches, the skin conditions, tinnitus, ME. Um, there's, there is a link there, but they don't often want to recognize the link with the mental health. Um, very importantly, the venue is in the community, not in a GP waiting room, or a room in a medical center, or a health center, or a mental health center. It's in the community next to Pizza Hut, or down the road from, you know, Boo Cinema or something. So, or near the sports centre or something. So it's not, it's not in a, because um, they don't want to be stigmatised, these patients. It, it's a manualised approach. It works on the principle of recovery, so we're not about cure, we're about supporting patients so that they can self-manage their own care. Um, and so the programme goes on, it rolls on in terms of recovery. It uses this standardised um, tailor-made for each group, so there's certain themes the facilitator needs to cover at some point during the 12 weeks. So what we're saying is, we're not in the business of curing, although out of the patients in the uh, study, many of those patients came back and said their symptoms had gone. But that's not what we're saying we can do. Uh, what we're saying we can do is help the patient to live more well, if you like, with the symptom that they've got. It, it not only improves well-being, but it reduces stress and also the isolation these patients feel. Um, they feel they're, they're very much on their own with their symptom very preoccupied with their symptom, um, but then we have people in the group who also have 
the impact of their symptom, they don't have to tell them what the symptom is, but they also can't sleep or can't drive or you know, have difficulties going out and socialising or whatever. Um, after the group has ended, there's a phase two where we just text them and say, how are you doing? So depending on the response to that, if they're feeling ready um, psychologically, they could be signposted to CBT and or psychoanalytic psychotherapy. They could go to a self-help group, which we also fix up for them, not necessarily the same patients, but a self-help group. Or if they want, they can come back and have another facilitated group. They also wanted to know what to tell the patients about the group. So we've, we've designed a narrative, and they've had some input, to tell them what it is the patients will do and, and answer some questions the patient might ask them so they feel confident in telling the patient what's this all about. And also the patient has to register. So following the referral, the patient has to register either by post or online as well. And all the uh, assessment procedures, we've got a clinical psychologist doing our assessments, uh, naught, that's pre-group, week 13, that's post-group, and nine months later, follow-up. So we're, we're, we're going to collect data as we deliver. And the idea is to collect data so that we've got more leverage for the next contract. So we're, we're constantly going to be analysing our, our outcomes. So we found GP awareness is absolutely crucial. We're also going to be going to A&E and walk-in centres because a lot of patients present there. Liaison psychiatry, again, a lot of patients present there. And the medical hospital because in <laughs> you know, neurology, a lot of patients will go with the headache or the eye problems, and there's no, it's nothing there. They've done the scans and everything, there's nothing there. The neurologists can't find anything. And very rarely is there actually something, and they miss it, but they can't find anything. Um, same with uh, gas, gas, uh, gastroenterology and other specialist medical um, consultants can't find actually anything there. So we're going to target those next. Uh, I think they have, there has to be five years post qualifying. Um, as I said, with the counsellors. Um, it's an introductory course, currently two days, next year it will be three. Then there's a follow-up course for another three days with an assessment built in, and they have to do CPD one day a year. And then they get a licence to practice, they receive the manual, they get free supervision, and there's no fees for them to conduct the uh, groups in the local venue, to local to that GP locality. So we, we're in control of the venue because that's really important. Um, so you can train as a trainer, a supervisor, a trainer for trainers, or as a coach for the trainer. So there's a whole type kind of developmental process in the training as well. Thank you.